you know, I think it goes back to what a lot of uh, Asian American youth face and um, finding this weird balance of wanting to have a space to vocalize their experiences and feel comfortable to share more about themselves and their background while also not being given the whole responsibility of being the only voice um, to vocalize all of the experiences across you know, the whole continent of what constitutes uh, Asians. And I think that's you know, definitely a space in which there needs to be a bit more um, training and, and um, development of these trainings or um, you know, whether it be through textbooks or curriculums or, or other ways in the education space, um, that burden should no longer just be solely held by the students themselves. When you have all of this richness and then we don't have that knowledge passed on to our K-12 system. And if you're lucky, you're in college and you get to take an Asian American studies course. And you are lucky if you get this identity and you get this history. And so that's why it's hard for our young people to have a sense, uh, sense of belonging. Why did they feel like maybe they're right? Maybe they think I am a perpetual foreigner because I have family who are then. Or when are we going to be enough? We need a more robust education system that really emphasizes our lived experiences and the real Asian American history that has been gone ignored for so long. Like in this past year alone, um, hearing about all these incidents and having people try to bring up uh, Asian American contributions to American society. I've learned so many things that I have not learned before. And it's so upsetting that it took us trying to prove again, once again, our Americanness to unearth some of the accomplishments and like, you know, the, the successes of our community. It shouldn't be up to the young people to be the educators in the room. We can be the educators if we want to go into teaching, but I think the change really does need to start in the schools and that's where it starts in the curriculum. Um, I served for a year on the Connecticut State Board of Education where I actually worked on the ethnic studies curriculum that was passed and introduced as the first in the nation. And it was a really great experience to be able to push for that sort of change, but it wasn't even necessarily focused on the AAPI community, right? It was the Black and Latinx curriculum, which is definitely very necessary, but let's think about what kind of curriculum revolves around the AAPI community. Well, it's ancient China, it's imperialism from Japan or Britain colonizing India. You know, it's that sort of thing that doesn't exactly help with not reinforcing stereotypes and prejudice. So I think that we really do need to start at the schools. And if we change the curriculum, then it sort of helps shape the way young people are thinking. So when they move out into the world and they go into looking for jobs or become employers of themselves, they're way more open-minded and aware of what kind of stigmas they're propagating and all those sort of things that really make a better community for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Mm -hmm.